Okay, in the interest of time, I'm going to get started um, and introduce our first uh, speaker in this parallel session. Um, at the end of day one, uh, Celia Popovich from uh, York University, Toronto, Canada. Um, thank you for, for presenting today. Uh, some of you might know Celia's work um, in educational development, and today Celia will be speaking about the selfie generation, but not in um, class instructive views. Um, so over to you. Okay, thank Celia. you. Thank you. Um, hi, hello. I'm feeling really slightly discombobulated, if that's the word we use here. I've been in Canada for 12 years, so I'm, I've got really confused about which words we use in England and which in Canada, so I just use the wrong words everywhere. But anyway, the reason I'm particularly um, discombobulated is that about two hours ago, I was holding my grandson, who was born last night. So <laughs> I know, I had to just say. <laughs> and he's already part of the selfie generation, you know, there's, <laughs> there's pictures out there, but not on social media, because my daughter doesn't want me to anyway so thank you just to get that in um yeah so uh, what I'm talking about today is it's a really small study that I did um and I mean really small study I'll, I'll explain in a, uh, in a moment um because I've been intrigued over the well certainly during and after the pandemic um experiences uh by what we tend to think of as you know students being happy to have photos of themselves all over the place take pictures not just students, you know, many of us take a snap of picture, otherwise it hasn't happened. And yet on online classes, reluctance to turn on the camera. So there has been work done already, and I think we probably know why students don't are reluctant to put the cameras on. Um, some students, or we might experience a lot of students are reluctant to turn the cameras on, but I was interested to know what the faculty members actually think about it and whether it's an issue for some, not so much for others, or if it's a general issue at all, or maybe it's just me, I don't know. So what I did was, as I say, a very small little experiment. I just sent off oh, experiment research. I asked the, um, uh, the faculty at York, where I'm based in Toronto, um, to fill in a short six question survey, uh, asking asking a few things around their attitudes. So that's what I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about the students per se. I'm talking about the what I've gleaned from, from my colleagues. And the main thing I'll say is, I think this is the start of an area that we could, it would, could well be worth looking into more deeply. So um, yeah, just a, a small uh, investigation. There's about, I think the, the, um, there's about 3,000 faculty members, including contract faculty, who were invited to complete the survey. And I got the stunning response of 68. So <laughs> that tells you something. Uh, so I think we need to think, OK, who are the people who are actually responding to, to this survey? Uh, so with, with that in mind, um, yeah. And I told them I would be summarizing the, I would be presenting at, uh, at this conference. So the first question I asked, just a simple um, a simple question, how important is it for students to turn on their cameras in online classes such as Zoom and Teams? We tend to use Zoom at, uh, at York, but um, one of the, the um, another an area I'd like to look into is whether platforms make much difference. And in Zoom, if those of you that use Zoom, um, generally speaking when you have your camera on you see yourself the whole time and I suspect that might be might have something to do with it anyway what I was asking the faculty was how important did they think it was and of those 68 almost 20 percent thought it was extremely important and another 41 percent thought it was somewhat important so 60 percent of those who responded thought it was important and and just um 4% unimportant and uh, yeah, 13% somewhat important. So we've established they think it's important, the majority do. So then I asked if they required students to turn on their cameras. Um, and only one, there's only one respondent actually, <laughs> that 1% said yes at all times that they required it. Uh, a further 4%, much smaller number than I was expecting, said yes when speaking. So when the students are speaking, they're required to have their cameras turned on. But the big majority of 65% said no, but I encourage them. So that's the, the general gist. And I'm not surprised by that, actually. And, and no, sorry, it's uh, almost 30% don't, encourage, don't require it at all. I'm not really surprised that much by that when I think about it, because the message that went out from our institution to students, to faculty, sorry, was 
it, particularly during the pandemic when suddenly, and it was a big move for us, most people didn't teach online at York. So when we were required to, it was a huge shift. And there was a, a very strong message went out that it would be an invasion of students' uh, privacy to require them to have their cameras on. Um, don't even go there. So people, I think, possibly if anything, went the opposite extreme of, of uh, um, you know, actively, well, not discouraging them from turning it on, but not making much of a deal of it. So, but that said, so if we just go back, so even though, um, 60% uh, think it's important or very important, um, very few actually require it. So then I asked uh, just an open text question. What impact, if any, do you perceive in the use of cameras by students on students learning and or your own teaching? And yes, I know that's a huge long question with lots of things in there. And I was really just fishing to see what I didn't know. I just didn't know really what, what the attitude was out, um, out there. And so I got all sorts of responses, fairly, fairly short. It wasn't too difficult to, to go through and uh, um, collect the, the comments into various themes. Um, the reason there's just one down there positive, that doesn't mean the rest were all negative. It's just that that was the response. <laughs> I just said positive, so there wasn't much more I could get out of it. But for the for the other comments, um, as I say, I try, I try to theme them. And some of the some of the comments uh, touched on more than one theme, so it's not a straight you know, addition. But I'll, I'll just go through these. Mostly, I think um, they won't surprise you what people said, but I think there's some quite interesting nuances that we can perhaps get from them. Um, so yeah, so student engagement. So. These are the comments that people made that referred to having the camera on somehow ensures student engagement or suggests it. Um, I, I did think it was interesting. That, so some people were saying things around. So these are two, just two, I selected two, um, two quote quotes. Students seem to engage more and multitask with non-course related items less when the camera's on. I'm immediately thinking, how do you know? But that's the, that's the instructor's impression. If they've got the cameras on, they're less likely to be watching TikTok or doing their homework or I don't know what they think they're doing. I don't know what they're doing, but yeah. Um, and some are much more strident than saying having the camera on is required for student engagement. You cannot be engaged if you haven't got the camera on. Now, whether that person is one of the ones that insists on having cameras on all the time, I don't know because I, I made it an anonymous survey. Um, the next most uh, common theme that came up was if the students don't have their cameras on, I as an instructor find it harder. Or conversely, if they have it on, I feel I feel more engaged. I do a better a better job. So one comment: I find it difficult. I find it difficult to engage with a class when few or none have their cameras on. This impacts on my performance. I mean, quite a lot to unpack there. Perform? Are you performing when you're teaching? And maybe when you're teaching online, it's a different experience. I mean, I'm performing for you now, and some of you are looking at your at your computers with or without your camera on. I've no idea if there's anyone out there looking at me, um, and some of you are looking at me, and I am getting feedback from it for sure. You know, and if I see nods, I'm encouraged. Or if I look, people look completely bored. I sort of just want to go, you know, or whatever it is. But online, it's much harder. We know that because you you haven't got eye contact. So, I think that's probably not a um, unexpected thing to say. This one I find interesting. I'm better able to teach to the students' needs and abilities. So if the camera's on, I can adjust what I'm doing. I'm taking in presumably clues from, from the expressions and so on. You can tell people are following or seem to be confused when the cameras are left on. And then uh, the third one, seeing students' faces is helpful in determining body language when teaching. It also helps me remember who that student is. And that was something that came up in a couple of the other themes too, around this idea of if I can't see somebody, I can't, it's harder for me to get a sense of who they are. And so it's sort of, you know, it's fairly obvious, I guess, when you think about it, this is how we learn with interact with, with people as social beings, but when we're online, um, we kind of go into this slightly different space. Um, there were then some comments around privacy and surveillance, not so more of a negative uh, aspect. Um, and some of the some of the comments were quite uh, indicated quite a bit of concern around this. So I'm sorry if that's 
I hope that's large enough for you to read. Teachers need to be reminded that students don't like the feeling of being surveil surveilled. I think I, mean, I think think of uh, Panopticon. Teachers who try to encourage cameras to be on or make it a requirement forget what it's like to be a student. Students like to have advocacy over who sees them. Same can be said with teachers. Having your camera on is not the same as being attentive. So quite opposite to that earlier view that you need the camera on to be engaged. And the other one, I like seeing faces and reactions to engagement, but the need for cameras to be on, I feel, is more for instructor comfort than for the benefit of the students. I worry it undermines their agency and professionalism of our students as though they're being surveilled or need to fake engagement when really their level of engagement for online learning is up to their own discretion. And then to contradict that, <laughs> or to set against that, uh, themes around having a camera on as a way of building community <clears throat> so um, it can be positive in building a sense of community i think learning as part of a community is beneficial members of this community will meet outside of class to discuss material they'll also engage during class time i believe that camera use promotes this sense of classroom community um i don't know what sort of size classes are typical um in your institutions but um across York, at York, we go from small graduate classes, probably the smallest would be like, say six students, um, to a thousand students on a first year undergrad uh, psychology course, for instance. Five minutes, thank you. Um, so uh, yeah, so the comments were, were around the difference between if you're working with a small or a large group. So if you've got a thousand students, you can't see them, even if they've got the cameras on anyway, or well, certainly not in the, uh, the things that we use. So, um, so several students, uh, several responses commented on that. Okay, I then um, I then asked a question about their own use. So I asked the uh, in the survey in large meetings where there are more than twenty participants, which is the size of most classes and more than twenty class uh, twenty students. What's your own typical camera use? And interestingly, only four percent said that they themselves would have the camera on all the time. 35% sometimes, 21% um, only when, when speaking, and 2% um, uh, and, uh, so are off. However, you'll notice that although there were 68 responses to the survey, only 48 people answered this question. So whether they just gave up by then or didn't want to say, or maybe it was too complicated. Some meetings I have it on or some I don't, I, I couldn't say. But anyway, I thought that was interesting um, that we behave like our students. <laughs> Um, and then finally, these, these last, uh, last few slides are around uh, a, a final open question. I was hoping to learn some really great ideas and techniques, and some of them were quite interesting. This, my favourite one was pure charm. So what techniques do you use to get students to have their cameras on? I just charm them. Great. Lovely. Um, anyway, so various things around um, uh, Forms of punishment and reward, basically. So reward students with attention if they have the camera on um, and not if they don't. That came up quite a bit. Uh, they, um, appealing to sense of equity so that everybody benefits if we all have the cameras on. Um, a few more here. Uh, create activities that depend on interaction. Make use of chat instead of um, relying on the, on the uh, camera and... Um, so that's giving a lot of time and um, breakout rooms. So the key seems to be, as, again, as many of you know, if you if you have students in smaller groups, they're more likely to uh, to have the cameras on and engage and all those beneficial things that were, were stated. Um, some people, I, I imagine this is a person who insists on having cameras on all the time, will say it's a requirement uh, when taking attendance or in the, uh, the course description and as I say, rewarding with attention. Um, modeling desired behavior, so the instructor having their camera on. Um, and uh, this is quite an interesting one. Again, it's going to depend on the size of the class, but not doing it publicly, but sending a private message to somebody in a chat. So it'd be great to see you. Uh, there was one person who said, I do mention um, that if you want me to give you a reference, it really helps if I know who you are. <laughs> I think I might use it on myself. Anyway, brush that last bit a little bit, but the slides are, are available. So as I say, really just a small study looking into um, instructors' attitudes and I think opening up some areas that we might want to explore further. 
Anyway, if you want to have a conversation with me beyond today, we'd love you to hear from you. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, Celia. Um, next up, we have Carl Sykes.